Do you need some help setting boundaries? Maybe you never grew up having boundaries. Maybe you're not sure what boundaries are. are. Today, I want to dive in and talk about boundaries, but give you seven strategies for setting boundaries for dealing with toxic people. If you guys are new here, my name is Ben Taylor. I'm self-aware narcissist on this channel to provide awareness, growth, healing, and change. I'm the founder of Raw Motivations, creator of the NARC app, and your guide in the 45-day Clarity Challenge. Today, we're going to talk about how boundaries are ultimately for you and how much you put up with. And so we're gonna give you some ideas and seven strategies to be able to help you in dealing with boundaries. So we're going through a, a, a portion of the book, The Narcissist in Your Life by Julie Hall to help you establish healthy and good practices in setting boundaries. Number one, tune into your feelings. A lot of times when people are talking about boundaries, they're just thrown out there and you don't really have a clue of what you're supposed to do. You first need to understand like what is actually going on. Having introspection, understanding that your body is going to tell you at times when you're put in uncomfortable situations of like, wait a second, this doesn't feel good. Like this is very triggering. This is something that is accelerating my heart rate or something that is that is making me feel very anxious. Tune into your feelings, tune into your body of what's actually going on. Sometimes you can start tapping into this with even like meditation, with understanding the triggers, or maybe you have to start doing breath work because you're starting to get anxious in different situations or around different people or when certain topics are brought up. So tune into your feelings, okay? First off, just try to get an idea with that. Number two, you need to give yourself permission to actually say no. A lot of times people in toxic relationships are never given that permission. You need to sometimes give it to yourself. Even after being in or out of a relationship, it can be really hard to have that permission, especially when you're dealing with friends, especially when you're dealing with family of like, can I actually say no to these people? Like, yes, you actually can. It's okay. You're allowed to say no. The reason why is it's essential for you. It's essential for your self-love. It's essential for your protection. It's essential for your growth in developing you to be able to say, no, I'm not going to do that or I'm not going to go there or be with this person, whatever it might be. Okay. Number three, the focus on you. Take care of you. Meet your needs. Understand that other people are not going to come into your life and meet your needs. Those friends, those toxic family members, whatever it might be, they're not going to meet your needs. They're not going to interact in the way that you want them to interact because of that toxicity. So you have to bring out self-care. You have to bring out what do I need to work on? What do I need to focus on? How do I need to provide? Whatever it might be. That's developing healthy habits, developing healthy things on a day-to-day -day basis that are going to help you move forward in life in a good mindset. That's developing good triggers to have intentionality going through the day of, hey, this helps keep me focused. This helps me focus in the area that I need to be. Maybe you need to work on different aspects. Maybe you need to work on like how you're going to take care of yourself like physically or mentally or emotionally, whatever it might be. You need to focus on you so that you're able to say like, hey, I'm focusing on me and because of that, this is something I don't want to involve myself. This is a boundary that I have to make sure that I'm okay. So you have to make sure that you're meeting your needs. Number four, oftentimes, is to reach out. Reach out a lot of times to healthy people to trustworthy people, to people that you're able to get an idea of this is actually what being healthy actually is. You know, when a person is struggling and with a toxic and negative mindset, when they get plugged into people that have great mindsets or have good, healthy relationships, they start to see, wait a second, what, how I've been living and the people I've been interacting with is not helping me, but pulling me down. And they're able to start pulling them up. So when you reach out to healthy people, to trustworthy people that understand different things about narcissistic abuse, that understands what's going on, that helps in the aspect of not just setting boundaries, but also to establishing like, oh, this is actually a boundary that I should have that I didn't even think about. It might be something that you're getting impacted by the toxic person that other people have no clue. We see this a lot of times with people who've been brought up in toxic households or narcissistic households. Someone else is like, you let them do that? And like, this is something that happens. And all of a sudden they're like, whoa, I didn't even realize that because this is how I was raised. So when you reach out to healthy and trustworthy people, that helps a lot of times. All right, number five, seek safe support. So not just healthy and trustworthy people you can observe and can be around, but you need that support in a lot of different aspects. You see, being with a toxic person, you were taught so many times to ignore your feelings. 
to ignore who you are, to ignore what's actually going on on a day-to-day basis and say those needs, those feelings, those emotions do not matter. So we can just move right past that. Okay, this is a great time for it when you need to seek that safe support of getting to a place where you can open up to a therapist, to a coach, to a friend, to maybe family members, but make sure it's people that understand what you're going through, that understand narcissism, that understand the toxicity that's actually happening and are able to come into your life and support you versus tear you down in some of those aspects. Number six, be direct. Tell people, I'm going to do that or I'm not going to do that. That's something I will do. That's something I won't do. Like, don't beat around the bush with some of these people. If it's a toxic person, like narcissistic person that you're dealing with, then you have to be like, hey, I can't be super direct because I don't know how they're going to respond or they've been violent before. Understand, focus on that. Make sure that you're safe. But otherwise, with other people in your life, the friends, the family, toxic people that might be in your life, you need to be pretty direct of like, no, I'm not going to do that. Oh, I can't believe you're not going to do that. They're going to push back. But you need to understand in setting those boundaries, you have to be really crystal clear to a lot of people saying like, this is something that I'm not going to tolerate. This is my needs or this is my limits, whatever it might be. This is as far as I'm going to go. Okay. Now, like I said, be careful knowing that response with narcissists because I don't want to set you up to have any violence, something like that. But be careful in that situation. Number seven, understand your responsibilities. This is a tough one for a lot of people, especially when we talk about narcissistic families or friends or different enmeshment, like there's whole different aspects of it. But a lot of times people struggle with taking responsibility of the other person, especially the other partner, especially the family member of taking that responsibility. You need to remember and understand you are responsible for you. You are responsible for how you act, for how you react to other people. You're responsible for establishing boundaries, okay? What you're not responsible for is you're not responsible for another person's self-esteem. You're not responsible to pump them up. You're not responsible to make sure that that person is happy or that they are enjoying life. That is also that person's also choice. You're not responsible for that person's relationships. You're not responsible to make sure that they have a relationship with their friends, their family, their kids. You're not in charge of that. You're also not responsible of their treatment to you or to others. And ultimately, you're not responsible for their behavior. A lot of times when you've been with a toxic person, you start to think that you are responsible for the things they've done because the other person has flipped it around on you and made you feel that way. So in understanding your responsibilities and understanding, hey, that's not on me. That's something you chose to do. This is me. This is how I'm living. I'm responsible for how I act. I'm responsible for how I react. I'm responsible for the boundaries that I need to set to protect me from other people that are attacking me. I'm responsible to manage my own expectations, to not keep doing the same thing over and over and over again, expecting different results, but to say, no, like I know this is what's happening. So I'm going to either lower my expectations. I'm going to get out of the relationship, whatever it might be. You're responsible for your choices, for your relationships, for your health, for your attitude. And the more you realize that you're responsible for those things and you can take control over those, the more you're able to establish and build healthy boundaries in your life. You know, last but not least, boundaries are for you. They're not for the other person. So many times people think that a boundary is them putting a list of rules and regulations on another person. You need to do this. You can't do this. Boundaries are not built that way. A lot of times a toxic person will tell you that your boundaries for yourself are limiting what they want. And that would be manipulation control. So yes, it is limiting in that aspect. But your boundary is meant to be for yourself. Meant to be, hey, this is the level that I'm willing to go in your abuse. This is the level that I'm willing to go in how you're treating me. Okay, you want to push past that? Okay, I'm out. Like this isn't something, this isn't a conversation I want to engage with. This isn't a a moment that I want to experience with you. I am out because you have not respected that I'm not willing to go to that place with you, to interact with you in that way, and to pass up my values, my vision of where I want to go. When people struggle building boundaries, they normally struggle having a good identity and sense of self of knowing who they are in the direction that they want to go. When you're driving down the road and you know, I want to go this direction, there's medians in the road. There's these barriers a lot of times in the road, and that's meant so that other people can't come across the road and impact your life. 
And so when we're going this way, you have someone that's on the other side that's like, hey, like, I want to break through your boundaries and I want to mess you up. I want to take you a different direction. You understand? Like, no, like you can do whatever you want on that side of the road, but I'm going this way because this way is the direction that I have vision, that I have values, that I'm called to go, all those type of things. Understanding that, hey, your boundaries, they can be active of like, this is what I, this is where I'm going and where I need to go. Sometimes they're reactive of I don't want to experience this anymore, but you can build boundaries on your vision and on your values. And those boundaries are for you and what you're putting up with. That means when someone comes in your life and they're doing something that's against one of your boundaries, you can be like, hey, you're totally fine to do that. It doesn't even matter to me because this is who I am. I'm going this direction. If you want to do that, that's fine. You're just not going to be doing it with me. Okay. If you need help, working on setting these boundaries, like either either advice or encouragement or different stuff. You can ping off different people. I want you to take your healing to a whole nother level by joining the NARC app. The NARC community, N-A-R-C-A-P-P, narcapp.com, the NARC app community is a community of like-minded people to help you heal, grow, and change, and to be able to get that community to say, hey, this is how we work on our boundaries. We have a course in there that Bree did from Abuse is Abuse. She wrote a whole course about boundaries. You can access that inside the app. You can access other people to be able to ask for encouragement, to be able to grow. You can access different discounts of one-on-one coaching, group coaching, all that kind of stuff. So feel free to be able to check that out. Go to narcapp.com. If you want to talk to me one-on-one, would love to hear with you. Um, just go to rawmotivations.com, click on one-on-ones, and you'll have a great afternoon, morning, evening, whatever it might be, and set those boundaries.